Introduction to Revelation As promised, prophesied, and foreshadowed throughout Scripture, we are now in the last days or end times of the kingdoms of men, where the wisdom from above is being restored for all men, Daniel chapter 12, verse 4, Micah seven fifteen, Revelation 5, 1 and following, Joel chapter 2, Acts chapter 2, 17 through 21. Second Peter 3. The kingdom of Elohim is as one day, the Lord's day, or the Lord's Sabbath to our Lord. But for men it is 1,000 years divided into two ages by the apostate, subjective truth, preaching, Bibles, religions, and pseudoscience of men. Second Thessalonians 2, verse 3. Second Peter 3, verse 8. Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 7, the royal law, James 2, 8, or perfect law of liberty, James 1, 25, is a completed Bible Christ will again wield when he resumes his reign over earth. It was given to Christians in 70 A.D., Judas, verse 3, at the first coming of Christ, and its restoration will be completed in about 2065 A.D. at the second coming of the Lord, Revelation 1, 3, Revelation 22, verse 20. The subjective truth and pseudoscience of men, the preaching, religions, and Bibles from below, James 5, could never have worked. Men's role in the scheme of redemption has only always been to fail, which we're good at, Jeremiah 10, 23, thus illustrating our need for salvation brought down from heaven to save us from ourselves. The Lord requires that for 6,000 years we learn pain, suffering, and death under the rules of Satan in the kingdoms of men, Genesis 2, 17 through 4, 12, 1 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 11, Romans 5, 13, Acts 17, 30, so that we could understand the cost of being separated from the ways of the Lord and the tree of life, Genesis 2, 17 through 4, verse 12. For those called out of darkness into the glorious light of the one true faith, we know the sword of the Spirit is back. For those with ears to hear, the Lord reveals that Satan is the man of sin. Second Thessalonians two one through eleven, Romans five twelve, Genesis two seventeen through four twelve, Daniel two forty four, Daniel chapter twelve verse six, Joel chapter two, Acts chapter two seventeen through twenty one. In the oldest Jehovah breathed book, the book of Job, given by the Holy Spirit through the pen or tongue of Moses. When Satan was a living man, the Lord gave him the power to deceive and harm Job and his family. Then the Lord stepped back and allowed Satan to bring Job pain, suffering, and death, all while Satan was pretending to be Jehovah, 2 Thessalonians 2, 4. Because of free moral agency and because men cannot stand up, against Jehovah. For 6,000 years of human history, the Lord has stepped back, hid his face, power, glory, majesty, love, and Bible so that Satan could rule over the kingdoms of men and so that we could learn that we need the ways of Elohim to save us from ourselves. So Job, as have all men for 6,000 years, believed the lies of Satan that he was Jehovah. So it was the reason that Job questioned Jehovah while believing His moral standards were better than Jehovah's. Saul, before his conversion to Paul, believed Satan when Satan told him that Christ was a blasphemer. Satan, the demon, the Antichrist, told Saul that the Hebrew Elohim was singular in number, that Christ was not Elohim in the flesh, nor did he have all authority. Men tried to eliminate Christ to protect the Bible's preaching and religions of men because Satan convinced men that our preaching and our Bibles and our faith systems are better than Christ. Genesis 2, 17 through chapter 4, verse 12. 2 Thessalonians 2, 10. For 6,000 years, Christ hid away his face, power, glory, majesty, love, and Bible so Satan could rule over the world and men could learn In the school of hard knocks, how badly we need the king of kings. Satan, the demon, still possesses the bodies of world leaders today. Just as Herod murdered all children under the age of two, 
So are world leaders today bringing great harm, suffering, and death to humanity because Satan knows he has but a short time. John 12, 31 through 32. If you want salvation from this perverse generation, believe the Lord's promise about his second coming. 2 Peter 3, verse 4. We can believe the avatar of Christ, Michael, is back with his two-edged sword, Those who the Lord calls can now picture the Lord with the sharp, double-edged sword of the Spirit coming out of his mouth. In these last days of the kingdoms of men, the perfect preacher is back, ready and armed for war, separating family members from family members. Matthew 10, verse 4, Hebrews 1, verse 2. As foreshadowed by Ezra and Nehemiah, the Babylonian Rome apostasy, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, is ending. The second temple in 531 B.C. foreshadows the spiritual temple soon to be rebuilt with living stones or Christians. The second age of one faith from Elohim Christianity is back. The destroyer, 1 Corinthians 10, 10, or space weather is back, and just as it is, destroyed the world by flood and saved the righteous, it will destroy the unrepentant with the same fire that will prepare a new heaven and a new earth for the righteous to possess. Matthew 5, verse 5, Ephesians 2. In the kingdom, the Father of all mercies and comforts will be back. Every spiritual blessing in Christ will be back. The good shepherd will be back in our lives. Those with ears to hear can hear him knocking now. The great wedding feast will be back for the living Christian on earth and the righteous dead in heaven. In 20, starting in 2065 A.D. We can't imagine the mysteries to be revealed, Matthew 13, 11, as the ways of Elohim, Jehovah, are as high as the heavens above the ways of men, Isaiah 55, 9 and following, exceeding abundantly greater than we can possibly imagine, Ephesians 3, 20 and following. Satan has convinced us that money is not a root of evil, but it It's necessary to acquire all we can, any way we can. We believe that we had to save ourselves at the cost of enslaving human and child trafficking, slavery, mutilation, cancel culture, war, murder, to make sure we have our phones, computers, cars, cheap stuff, fun, luxuries of life for a short time. But men always have our thumbs on the scales of justice, Jeremiah 10, 23. And we now are starting to realize that Christ has all authority, Matthew 4, 23 through Matthew chapter 7. He is the only way to peace on earth, Revelation 18, 4, Matthew 7, 21, Ephesians chapter 4. We believed we knew Jehovah. We believed we preached better than Jehovah. We believed we knew the answers to the meaning of life. But now it's time for us to again try and answer the 40 questions the Lord asked in Job 38, 1 and following. Where were you when the Lord created the heavens and the earth? Where were you when he set up space weather to destroy this world in 2065? The Lord warned humanity that we would have to patiently endure the pain, suffering, and death brought by the ways of men until the coming of Christ. Both the first coming of Christ, the giving to the saints the one faith Bible once and for all time in 70 AD, Judas 3, and the second coming of Christ, the restoration of the Bible, the book of Job, Ezra, Nehemiah, 2 Thessalonians 2, 1 through 11, James 5, 7 through 11, 1 Corinthians 13, 9 through 12, Micah 7, 15, Revelation 5, 1 and following. The Bible's restoration will be completed in about 2065 AD. That's when the second age of the kingdom begins. Because of free moral agency, the Lord stepped back. He hid his face, power, glory, majesty, and Bible for 1,680 years. So there could be two ages of Christianity, Ezekiel 39, 25 through 29. Because of the power of the Bible, the Lord restores it over a period of 43 years. The time of spiritual warfare and the last days are end times of the kingdoms of men. With the announcement that Satan is the man of sin, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, Pre-Christian spiritual warfare began 
in 2022 AD. Consider Matthew through John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The first 10 years of Christianity will be back starting in about 2025 AD. Consider Acts chapter 1 through 12. Though none of us will be qualified to be called Christians for 10 years until we learn more about agape love, Acts chapter 11, verse 26, we can see the great and terrible day of the Lord approaching by observing the destroyer, Hebrews 10, 25, or space weather, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 10, that's going to destroy the evil, unrepentant world in about 2065 A.D., leaving a new heaven and a new earth for Christians to spend the last 730 years of Christianity in the kingdom of Elohim. The time is at hand where one is blessed or happy in reading and understanding and obeying the words of Revelation, Revelation 1-3. He who testifies these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. And we say, Amen, come Lord Jesus, Revelation 22, verse 20. Revelation chapter 1. Again, these are some introductory remarks. We are in the last days of the kingdoms of men, the last days of the Roman apostasy, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3. We are in the last days of, of the ways of men away from the ways of of Jehovah, Satan, the demon, the Antichrist, while pretending to be Elohim, has been lying to us, convincing us that Christ does not have all authority and that men's ways are superior to Jehovah's ways. Isaiah 55, verse 8 and following. Ephesians 3, verse 20. So we, like Job, have believed that Satan was Jehovah. It's why we've suffered under the ways of men. And it's time for us to consider the 40 questions that the Lord asked in Job 38, 1 and following. Where were we when the Lord created the heavens and the earth or set up space weather that's going to destroy the unrepentant in about 2065 A.D.? Satan has convinced us that money is not a root of evil, but it's necessary to acquire all we can, any way we can. Men believe we're smart enough to decide who lives and dies when we always have our thumbs on the scales of justice, Jeremiah 10, 23. Men's role in the scheme of redemption always has been to show that we need the ways of Elohim and agape love. We live by the sword in the kingdoms of men, and if we continue, there we're going to die by the sword in the kingdoms of men. Revelation 18, 4, Matthew 7, 21 and following. We have not been able to understand why the Lord would tell the rich young ruler to sell what he had and give to the poor. We couldn't comprehend how the meek will inherit the new heaven and the new earth, and that the same fire, space weather, that will destroy the world with all unrepentant evil men will be the same space weather that will create a new heaven and new earth for the righteous. Matthew 5, 5, Ephesians 2, 7, 2 Peter 3. Christ is once again wielding the sword of the Spirit in these last days, these end times. The great Christian race, what the prize is now on, it's set before us as the second coming of Christ in about 2065 A.D. In chapter 1 of Revelation, we are reintroduced to the sword of the Spirit, or Revelation unsealed, as Elohim once again begins to restore or grant to us the wisdom from above, the supernatural objective truth from God. You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. John 8, 32. Revelation 5, 1 and following. The Bible is being restored. The Seven seals are broken. The lies of Satan are broken, giving to us the perfect law of liberty. James 1, 5. James chapter 3, verse 15. Consider now that we can now start beginning to understand the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew chapter 4, 23 through 7. The book of Revelation, 1 Corinthians 2, 7. The whole Bible, which is not a private interpretation. 2 Peter 3, 20. The Lord has hidden his face, power, glory, majesty, and Bible so there could be free moral agency and so that Satan could rule over this world. The time is at hand 
when one is blessed or happy in reading, understanding, and obeying the words of this prophecy. Revelation 1.3 He who testifies these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Revelation 22, verse 20. Now to the text. Revelation chapter 1. The revelation from Jesus. Jehovah is salvation is what Jesus means. Christ, the anointed one, which Theos, Theos the Father, gave him to show unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his messenger. We are in the last days. These things are to shortly come to pass. We are in the last days of the kingdoms of men, waiting and preparing and getting ready for the second coming of the Lord. So the things must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his messenger, that is the Holy Spirit, unto his servant John, who bore witness of the word of Theos and of the testimony of Jesus Christ, even of all things that he saw. The times at hand, when one is blessed or happy in reading, understanding, and obeying the words of this prophecy. John, to the seven assemblies that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits that are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the chief of the kings of earth, to him that loves us and looses us from our sins by his blood." And he made us kings and priests. Again, men's part in the scheme of redemption was to show that we need the ways of Elohim. For 6,000 years of human history, we've had kingdoms of men. But men always have their thumbs on the scales of justice. It brings pain and suffering, doing things men's way, because salvation comes from above. What is salvation? Salvation from ourselves. We are what we need saved from. Unto Theos and the Father, to him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he will come with the clouds, and every eye will see him. At least in part, this is in reference to the destroyer, or space weather, that those with ears to hear can now see approaching, Hebrews 10, 25. And they that pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth, will wail because of him, even so. Amen. And certainly, everyone will wail who doesn't repent in 42 years at the second age of the kingdom. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, your brother and partaker with you in tribulation and kingdom and patience, which are in Jesus, was on the isle that is called Patmos because of the word of God and the preaching of Jesus. And so now we're going from the preaching of men back to the preaching of Christ. Only Jesus can preach the gospel of the kingdom, Matthew 4, 23. I came to be in the Spirit. Both the first and second coming of Christ was about the thousand years where Christ rules over the world, broken into two ages. Again, Second Peter 3, 8, the Lord's day to the Lord is one day, but for men it's a thousand years divided into two ages by the kingdoms of men. And I heard behind me a great voice as a trumpet, that is Jesus, saying, What you see, write in a book and send it to the seven assemblies. Jesus, speaking to John, says, Write these things down. Now, it's going to be bitter. It's going to be sweet. It's bitter for us to understand that we've been listening to the lies of Satan. We've been under the rule of Satan. But it's sweet now to have agape love back and the ways of God back. Unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and to Pergamum, and to Thyatira, and to Sardis, and to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spoke to me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the middle of the lampstands, one like unto a son of man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about with the breast with a gold belt. And his head and his hair were white as wool, white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Now notice this is Michael, an avatar. Jesus doesn't literally have flame of fire. And his feet are not 
literally likened to polished brass, as if it had been refined in a furnace. And his voice is the voice of many waters. Now, his voice certainly may be that way. But now we see in the book of Revelation this vision illustrating Christ. And he had in his right hand seven stars. Now, these are going to be the seven prophets of Asia Minor that delivered the Bible that delivered the Bible once and for all time in 70 AD. It only needed to be delivered once. Now it's being restored. Revelation 5, 1 and following. And out of his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword. For us now the vision is clear. The sword of the Spirit is back. And it's going to go against Satan's mega sword, which is every wind of the doctrine of men. One true faith from God, one true faith Christianity, against every wind of the doctrine of men. It's time to wake up out of our slumber and realize that only Christ can now show us how to restore the Bible as foreshadowed by Nehemiah. This was contrast with the mega sword of Satan. And his countenance was as the sun shining in its strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as one dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last and the living one, and I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and of Hades. Write, therefore, the things which you saw. What did John see? That the Lord's always been in control. Christ stepped back so that we could have free moral agency because men cannot stand up against Elohim. So write what you saw. Satan's been ruling over us. The things which are. He's, he's ruling over us in the kingdoms of men and the things that are coming to come to pass. The second age of the kingdom of heaven is coming. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven gold lampstands. This is a great mystery of the gospel. The second coming of Christ. The seven stars, the seven prophets of Asia Minor. The Bible being delivered first time. Now it's being restored. Revelation 5 verses 1 and following. The seven stars are the prophets. The Bible was given by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit through seven prophets of Asia Minor in 70 AD. It's completed. To the seven assemblies and the seven lampstands are seven assemblies. So in the first century, they were close to overcoming Gnosticism. Now we're just now getting started. When we see the destroyer coming, and that is space weather. And by the way, there are all kinds of things happening now with space weather. We can see the day, the great and notable day of the Lord coming. When we see it, and only those with ears to hear, eyes to see, will see it. Only the, those who the Lord is ready to see it will see it. It's going to confirm to believers and eventually to unbelievers that the Lord's one faith Christianity is back. We're going to be poor in spirit. We're going to start humbling ourselves as little children. The preacher is back. We didn't know the ways of men. Satan lied to us. And now in a sense, we have to start all over. Blessed are those that are poor in spirit. What are we to repent of to be Christians? Repent of the ways of men. That's the way it was in the first century. And now the second age of Christianity is back. And we have to repent of the ways of men, just like Saul did with his Saul to Paul conversion. Now, I believe subconsciously none of us ever believed we were going to be judged by preacher or moral standards of men. And the Lord just didn't allow us to think about it. The Lord's been in control. It's really absurd for men to think they're like God. But the Lord did not allow us to think about it. He's been in control. He's allowed Satan to rule over this world because of free moral agency. The Bible from God is so powerful. If it had been on this earth all along, we couldn't have been free moral agents. We couldn't have stood up against God and, and understood the consequences of not 
believing in God.